if you're anything like me, you have an ample supply of milk bottle containers and other uh, containers uh, that you, you may recycle or may not recycle. Uh, but recycling is an important part of this whole green movement and um, I just hate to throw things away. I don't know about you, but uh, I think that there has to be some use for these milk containers. Uh, I collect so many of them, uh, I ju just hate to, to throw them out. I mean, if I have to throw them out, I'll, I'll put them in the recycling bin. But I, I think there's another use for them, and that's something that we're going to explore today. Um, as you know, water is probably the best medium we have to store heat. Uh, so if we got enough of these uh, milk bottles, uh, it seems like uh, it would be a good way uh, of storing heat. So basically what I want to do is use a hot air collector uh, and exchange the heat from the air uh, into these uh, bottles of water. Sometimes uh, I so don't let's know see. what I'm talking about How myself. I have to do it in order to understand. <laughs> and even then I don't understand. Anyway, we have so much time. Okay, so the first rack will just fit right into these slots like this. Okay, in the second row, you just push these in place. Remember these are 10 inches long, so they're designed to accommodate the milk bottles. You're probably wondering, well, how are the milk bottles going to fit in there? Uh, they won't be, you won't be able to uh, put them in, but well, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, we finished building our hot air collector, but now we need a place to store the heat that we collect. <laughs> All right, so remember that uh, heat storage chamber we were working on? Well, it's finally finished. So this is a air to water heat exchange system. Probably not the most practical system in the world, but I figured I'd give it a try. Anyway, uh, it consists of 16 half-gallon milk bottles filled with water. So we've already installed 12 milk bottles. Let's install the, the last four on the top row like this. Okay, now in order to get a good heat exchange, we want to cover uh, as much of the surface area of the milk bottles as possible. Uh, so we're using a fan to pump the, the heat from the collector and drive that heat over the surface area of the milk bottles. But if we just use the fan like this, the problem is that we just get a stream of hot air probably going someplace uh, towards the center, but it wouldn't distribute evenly over the entire surface area. So to increase the heat exchange efficiency, we need a baffle plate. That's what this is. Uh, so it's just a, a piece of plywood with a number of holes in it in the right locations. Hopefully they'll be in a good location. Uh, so this forces the hot air, rather than to uh, travel in a small stream across the milk bottles, uh, it's uh, designed to force the air to travel uh, in a more uniform manner, uh, sort of like Niagara Falls, if you know what I mean. Well, we're talking about air here, but anyway, it'll just be like a a sheet of air traveling across on, on both sides of these milk bottles. So hopefully we'll get about the best ex heat exchange we can. I hope. A little later we'll do an experiment and test this out. Now normally uh, you would use this type of uh, system to pump the hot air from the collector directly into your house and use the thermal mass inside your house uh, to uh, store the heat. But um, for experimental purposes, I'm just going to be using this small chamber filled with bottles of water. So I'll be able to measure the temperature uh, rise of, of the water and calculate how much heat is actually being collected. Uh, so the next thing we'll have to do uh, is insulate these uh, bottles. Okay, so 
had this uh, sheet of one inch polyisocyanurate as an R factor of seven. <laughs> Come on now, get in there, boy. Okay. Sometimes you have to talk to your materials to get them to behave. Okay, uh, and we we'll have to secure this a little better. But anyway, this is a basic idea. This is our heat storage chamber with the melt bottles filled with water. We finally found a home for our recycled milk bottles. Are you okay, this is a little this? muffin fan that we're going to be using inside our hot air collector. Uh, so we want to get some a rough idea of what the uh, volume of air that it's going to push out in uh, cubic feet per minute. So uh, we have this little garbage bag. This is a 30-gallon garbage bag. By the time, but by the time it gets crunched up, it's uh, closer to 50 feet, uh, gallons. Anyway, uh, so we want to see how long it takes uh, to fill up this garbage bag, basically. That sounds like fun, right? Okay, now, uh, this is a kind of a rough estimate, but I've already uh, check this out. And this is just about two cubic feet. All right, so you ready? One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand. Okay. All right. So it took uh, six seconds uh, to fill this container. This is about that's about thirty inches there. Anyway, if you consider the, it's a very odd shape. I thought this is a kind of a crude test, but altogether we have about two cubic feet of air and it takes six seconds to fill up uh, a space of two cubic feet. So what does that mean? That means, uh, so if we multiply uh, 10 times six seconds we get one minute or 60 seconds or, or 10 times uh, Two, that's uh, 20 cubic feet per minute. Okay, we're all ready to go. We've already built our solar hot air collector. This is the front of the collector, and of course this is the back. So the hot air is going to come out from the, the collector, and it'll enter the milk bottle heat storage chamber and uh, we'll exit at the bottom. Now I can lift this up so you can see the return right here. Okay, uh, anyway that's the basic idea, not too exciting. Uh, and this is the back of our milk bottle heat storage chamber. So you can see this is where the, the air will be sucked out of the uh, collector. So the hot air will enter the top and be blown down across the bottles and then return, you see, oh, I'll try to lift this, <laughs> you see the return on the bottom there, okay, okay, so much for that, uh, the only other thing I wanted to show you is, uh, this is just the simple little pan that we have, 20 uh, cubic feet per minute, so I'll plug this in, can you hear that? Okay, uh, so that's that's all we're going to be using. So it's very important to to baffle that that air. Otherwise, we just get a tiny stream of air. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Before we place our air to water heat exchange system in the sun and connect it with temperature probes, let's examine a cross section of the system and clarify how it works. As you know, hot air has a natural tendency to rise as cold, dense air replaces it. A totally passive thermosiphoning system is possible, but a fan may be used to increase the heat transfer efficiency. A practical solar hot air collector would use the thermal mass in a living space to store heat, but a wall of milk bottles filled with water is another possibility. Okay, our hot air collector has been joined to our heat collection chamber. Uh, you can see the heat collection chamber.
chamber here. And right now the fan is on. You can see, you can probably hear the fan. Can you hear everything here? Okay. So the fan is on and it's taking the heat that rises inside the collector and it's forcing that hot air down across the bottles and then back into the collector. So we have one temperature probe at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the middle of the heat storage chamber. So we'll get some idea of the kind of heat exchange that will be taking place. We also have a probe in the back to take some a the ambient temperature reading. Right now the ambient temperature is just about 50 degrees. Notice the input and output temperatures to and from the hot air collector between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Also, notice that the ambient temperature remains at 55 degrees Fahrenheit while the average temperature of the water in the milk bottles increases 5 degrees during this same interval of time. For an analysis of the data, go to jc-solarhomes.com. Recycling milk bottles may not be the best solution to the energy crisis, but learning to make better use of the products that are cluttering our landfills could extend the life expectancy of our planet.